Hello everybody and welcome back to GCSE History. In this lesson we are going to move on to the final of our major substantive topics. This topic focusing on the end of the First World War, or at least the events that lead up to the ending of the First World War. So we're going to examine the events essentially that lead up to and include the end of the First World War. And in this lesson in particular we're going to take place uh, we're going to sorry, uh, examine two key events which take place during this period. So we're talking about the latter years of the First World War, mainly focusing on 1918 and the events that take place in 1918. And we're going to focus on, the firstly, the USA entering into the conflict, something that we touched on briefly at the end of the last lesson. And we'll also talk about something we also touched on very briefly in the in the last lesson, which took place in 1917, which is the Russian Revolution and the ending of Russian involvement within the First World War. So let's first begin with the USA and the USA's intervention in the conflict. For the majority of the First World War, it was the official position of the United States that neutrality be the, the, the leading factor. They'd be a neutral setting. Uh, sorry, they'd be a neutral um, state within, within the context. However, they were supplying the Allies with, with, with equipment. So despite the fact that they were quote-unquote neutral, they were still supporting with non-militaristic means uh, the, the one particular side over the other, i.e. the Allied side. The supplying began to cause tensions between the USA and Germany, as you could probably imagine. And you could also couple this with the fact that in May 1915, the uh, German uh, Navy sinks the passenger line of the Lusitania, which obviously contained a number of US um, citizens, a number of US nationals, 128 specifically. Now, while the Lusitania was officially a civilian ship, it did also contain military supplies for armed forces. So it sort of was a bit of a grey area as to the uh, as to the intentions of the ship, because of course, um, while officially being a civilian ship and carrying civilians and probably carrying civilians for the purpose of um, being a civilian ship, there were still military supplies in place for Allied forces as well. And in response to this, Germany essentially put a halt to the policy of sinking ships across the Atlantic. This was by order of the Kaiser. And then when things got desperate in 1917, they continued this policy and started sinking supply ships again in order to try and alleviate the blockade that existed uh, against themselves for imports into Germany. Essentially, we see the fact that it was desperation that gets Germany to um, essentially capitulate and have to uh, continue to bomb and to sink uh, supply ships, some of which may have been American. Now, in addition to this, it was found out that Germany had a plan to ally with Mexico uh, against the United States. So not only were they being um, active in their attacks on, on, on cargo ships, which could uh, contain U.S. nationals, but they were also directly planning a conflict against uh, the USA with the help of the state of Mexico. So all of these factors led uh, the United States to declare war on Germany on the 6th of April 1917, officially bringing the USA into the conflict and ending their official quote-unquote neutrality. Now, initially, the USA was not particularly effective within their military objectives in the war. However, the USA entering the war on the side of the Allies was, of course, a huge blow for the morale of Germany. They were struggling as enough as it is uh, trying to win a war against uh, Britain, France and the Russian Empire, never mind with this new addition of the United States into the conflict as well. It was only until the summer of 1918 that the US was able to even have any kind of effect on the conflict anyway, because they now, sorry, they landed nearly one million US soldiers in France during that period. So the sort of mobilization of US forces and the effect that the US would have on the conflict more broadly was relatively muted until summer 1918. It was a very slow process in building up this kind of military advantage. Now, what was more significant and successful for the German forces was the Russian Revolution. So, the Russian Revolution compa uh, composed of two main events within the year of 1917. Firstly, we have the aptly titled February Revolution, which is where the Tsar of the Russian Empire, Tsar Nicholas II, was forced to abdicate from his throne. And 
a provisional government was implemented. Now, essentially, the provisional government attempted to run the Russian Empire along with the quote-unquote Petrograd Soviet. Now, the provisional government attempted to continue the war with their um, with with a new offensive. However, this was a disastrous idea and ultimately led to the second part of the Russian Revolution, which is sometimes known as the October Revolution. Now, sometimes you would argue that this could be seen as the Russian Revolutions, plural, but just culminating in two events which takes place in 1917. Now, the October Revolution saw the rise of the communist government under the leadership of Vladimir Lenin. Uh, Lenin issued in April something known as the April Thesis, which essentially um, declared the uh, attribution of peace, land and bread. Now, the first one is what is important for us because peace was the key uh, key goal for, 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 for Vladimir Lenin. He wanted to see an end to the First World War. Now, the new communist government sought peace with Germany in March 1918 with the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. Now, the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk was essentially imposed upon the Russian Empire, which is now the Soviet Union, uh, and um, the terms of the treaty were very, very harsh. So, uh, the impact that this had on Germany uh, was that they were able to concentrate all their forces on the Western Front. So rather than fighting a war on two fronts, which they had been since the beginning of the conflict, they were now able to go and transfer all of their eastern troops over to the west, which would bolster the, uh, the, the, the defences and the offensive capabilities of Germany on the western front.